everyone, welcome back to the GRE How To series where we make studying for the GRE a lot more tolerable. Today we're going to talk about decimals and how to work with them to make sure that you are doing your best on the test. Welcome back. I am so excited to be hearing from you and learning about what works for you in this series and getting your ideas. So keep them up. If you have any more suggestions, put your answers in the comments below and I will respond. So decimals, these are these lovely little dots that get us into trouble sometimes if we're not paying attention to what to do. So today I wanna go over some of the basics about decimals and some things that you wanna keep in mind mind when you see them on the test. So what's first gonna help us is to just get back to the basics and talk about place values. It's gonna be really important that you have a strong hold on place values because even on the test, they're going to ask you to round to a certain place value. And if you don't know what that is, that will be quite difficult. So let's just take a random number. Let's call it 5,462.387. When it comes to place values, it's pretty simple. The five is in the thousands place, the four is in the hundreds place, the six is in the tens place, and the two is in the units place. So when we cross over the divide at the decimal, that's where it changes. The three is in the tenths place, and the eight is in the hundredths place, and then the seven is in the thousands place. So it's a pretty quick thing to commit to memory. You just wanna make sure that you have a good grasp on what that is because you're going to be using that throughout the quantitative portion. And a quick reminder, whenever you're rounding, you wanna make sure that you are rounding things that end with five and above up. And if it's less than five, then you round it down. So let's talk about multiplying by powers of 10 because that has implications on how you treat your decimals. So when you're multiplying by powers of 10, you're actually going to shift the decimal to the right. And the cool thing about how many places to shift it by the number of the exponent. For example, if you're gonna multiply 2.54 times 10 to the second power, then you know you need to shift the decimal two places to the right. So 2.54 times 10 to the second power equals 254. This is a simple exercise, but it applies to 10 to the eighth power and so on. So that's something that you can easily carry on throughout the time when you're working on problems that have to do with decimals. So when you're going to be dividing by powers of 10, the decimal shifts to the left. So if you're going to have 2.54 divided by 10 to the second power, then you're going to be moving the decimal over two. So that means that it would be 0.0. 254, and that would be the answer. So just keep that in mind. Whenever you see multiplying or dividing by powers of 10, you're just shifting either to the right or the left. So when you are multiplying and dividing by 10 to negative exponents, it still shifts the decimal, but in the opposite directions. So when you are multiplying by 10 to the negative third power, you're actually going to be shifting the decimal three spots to the, oh, I'm not gonna point. <laughs> you're actually going to be shifting the decimal three spots to the left. And then if you're going to be dividing by 10 to the negative third power, then you're going to be shifting three decimals to the right. I can't point right or left because I keep forgetting which way is which when you're watching me on video. So if I've already pointed the wrong way, just do as I say, not as I did. So as we wrap up our talk on decimals, there are four things I want you to remember about the properties of working with decimals between zero and one. First, when you're multiplying a decimal between zero and one, you need to know that it makes the number smaller. So 0.2 times five actually equals one. It makes the number smaller. Now in contrast, when you divide by a number between zero and one, it makes the number bigger. So five divided by 0.2 equals 25. If you're going to be squaring a decimal between zero and one, then it's going to be making the number smaller. And if you're going to take the square root of a decimal between zero and one, it's going to be making the number bigger. They basically work the opposite 
opposite of how numbers greater than one work when you multiply, divide, square, and take the square roots. Those things are gonna be really important for you to just memorize so that you can actually logically work through some of the GRE problems without putting them in the calculator. These are things you can store, recall in the brain, and crank them out. That's all we have for today. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, now's a good time, I think so. I love it when you guys leave comments and you talk to me on Twitter. So if you wanna find me on Twitter, I'm at Michigan Ashley. And as always, put your comments and suggestions in the comments area below.